Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm back to working on the Jimmy Dress the Bandsaw restoration and give you guys a quick update on that. So uh, right here in front of me was where the bandsaw was sitting. It has left the shop, the main casting has. Uh, as promised, uh, we hauled that thing off to get sandblasted. So uh, I actually got that loaded up on my trailer uh, last week before I had some surgery done. I had some carpal tunnel and cubic tunnel surgery done on my left arm so I got all that loaded up all that heavy lifting before I had all this done uh, and uh, but I wasn't able to take it until this week which uh, I hauled it over there dropped it off with the sandblaster and uh, he told me two to three week turnaround on it and the game plan is, is they'll sandblast it and they're also going to go ahead and prime that whole thing with uh, an epoxy based uh, primer is what he told me he would use so anyway I'm waiting to get that back like I said it's gonna be a couple of weeks in the meantime uh, uh, and I'm going to come in here and start working on cleaning up some of this stuff here and getting it ready as well. Now, because of this surgery I had on my arm, I've kind of been doing light duty stuff around here. So some of the heavier pieces, I'm probably just going to leave alone for another week or so until I can get in here and pick them up. Uh, but some of these smaller pieces uh, definitely can go ahead and get them over in the blasting cabinet that I have and uh, go ahead and start working on those. So that's kind of my game plan. So so um, I'll tell you what, let's, let's take a little closer look. This is mostly on this table stuff I pulled off that bandsaw. There's a couple other pieces on here as well. But you can kind of see what we're starting with. And uh, we'll show you our game plan on starting to get this stuff cleaned up. So again, this is mostly the parts that we took off of the bandsaw, uh, the individual components here. And we've got a mixture of things going on. We got old scaly paint. We've got just rust on bare metal um, you know we've got just all kinds of there's some some grease and grime on some of the stuff that needs to be cleaned up but uh, at the end of the day all of it needs to be really cleaned up and prepared for either reassembly or uh, getting new paint and my game plan here is is on the stuff that's painted stuff that's rough castings um, like the outside of this we're going to take it over to the bead blaster and put it in the blasting cabinet and get it sandblasted down and um, have it go ahead and probably just go ahead and prime it until we decide what color paint we're going to use and the main reason for priming is just to prevent any rust now on stuff that we have machine surfaces uh, for example, this is the uh, trunnion. This piece fits into this piece, and that's what the table tilts on. This is a nice machine surface. And I really don't want to go put that on a sandblaster uh, because if I do, it's going to pit it, and uh, it may not uh, move as smoothly as if it was uh, just left in its machine state. So uh, this piece probably won't get sandblasted at all. Uh, this piece here is machined on the inside. I will probably sandblast it, but I'm just going to take real careful care to stay away from um, hitting the inside of these with any, any sand and probably clean up what I don't get with the uh, with the angle grinder, wire wheel, etc. Uh, also, another option and probably what I'm going to do with some of this stuff is uh, I've got a tank of evapo rust. Evapo rust is a rust removing liquid, very safely environmentally safe product doesn't harm anything you can put your hands down in it etc uses a chelation process to actually remove rust and uh, like this piece here probably what's going to happen is i'm just going to go dunk it in my tank of evapo rust and uh, pull it out and see what we need to do uh, so you know the things like these bandsaw guides probably just going to throw them in the evapo rust and uh, We'll take them apart and we'll probably have to clean these up a little bit on the wire wheel over on the grinder. Uh, but uh, I think we can get it mostly cleaned up that way. So just going to kind of take these uh, piece by piece and decide the best route to go. But that is kind of my, my game plan moving forward. So I'm going to take a couple of these pieces back there and put them in the blasting cabinet and start with that. I tell you what, I think what I'll do first is I'm going to get some of these pieces like this piece, the guides here, some of this stuff that I know is going to have to go into the Vapo Rust tank. I'm just going to go ahead and dump it in there. And uh, my tank is actually up in a different building, so I probably won't show it going in. But I think what I'll do is I'll get a good before picture of these going into the Vapo Rust, and then we'll get another shot after they come out so you can kind of see what it does. 
So here we go. This is my pile of rusty stuff that I want to take over and put in the evaporust tank. And uh, we've got some pretty good rust on here. We'll see how it does. Uh, some of this I took over to my parts washer. This had some grease on it. I tried to get as much of the grease and stuff off of these parts as I could uh, just to keep it out of my tank up there. But anyway, we've got some just all kinds of parts here. The guides, all the fasteners. Here's that uh, trunnion piece. These are the the pieces that, that the whole upper arm assembly ride up and down on. This is the tensioning piece. This is the uh, part that goes up and down that the guide attaches to. Got a couple of different screws in here for uh, making adjustments. So let's uh, let them soak overnight and see what they do. See what they come out looking like. All right. So let's look at the results here. Pretty impressive. So basically just took all those parts put them in my vapor rust tank i let them soak for about 24 hours and uh, then when i pulled them out um, you'll notice when you pull stuff out of a vapor rust it still looks like it has a, a stuff on it but if you take just uh, like a scotch bright pad or something and just wipe it off it just it just comes right off you don't even have to scrub it it's just almost just wipe it off so i took all these parts over to the sink and uh using scotch bright pad just wiped them all down and this is the the results uh very happy with how it turned out on the bolts basically i just took the scotch bright pad and i just kind of did one turn in my hand and then just kind of hit each one with the scotch Bright took a little bit of time, but uh, it really got almost all the rust off. And these actually had a little bit of moisture on them. Some of this rust that you kind of see back on here, it's just flash rust that popped back up. And I'll probably end up taking those all to the wire wheel and cleaning them up further anyway before we uh, reuse those fasteners anyway. But these all came out really nice. So very happy with these results. And uh, I think these are pretty much ready. So now, what I want to do uh, is go over to the sand blaster and the blasting cabinet and blast the other parts that need it. So before we go back there and start uh, sand blasting, I, I got a couple of more bearing caps here that have Babbitt in them and uh, I want to get all this melted out. I just don't want to embed this Babbitt with sand from my sand blaster. So just like we did uh, on the other parts, We'll just uh, come in here with a torch and melt these out. And I'm just uh, letting it drain down into my pouring ladle that I use with my Babbitt. We got a little grease and oil in there that's burning out here as part of the process, but uh, let's go ahead and get it out. All right, we got all our Babbitt melted out and uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here looking at this thing. You can, it has been welded up. This piece had been broken and uh, eh, they didn't do the greatest job welding it. That's all welding slag on the inside that they didn't even bother taking out. And I'm also seeing some cracks up here in the top that I can see oil seeping out that I don't think that they did anything with. So we're probably gonna have some repairs uh, to do this part later on, but we'll deal with that later. We'll go ahead and get it cleaned up right now. Let me get some pliers and I'll come pick that up and get it out of there. And got a couple other parts we need to get bearing material, Babbitt material melted out of as well. All right, I got my first part here to blast. We're over at blasting cabinet. I'm gonna go ahead and shut her up in here. I should have you guys kind of positioned where you can see what's going on. And uh, we'll get in here and see if we can blast this part out. Turn my vacuum on. I always forget that. Here we go.
All right, we have been busy over there at the blasting cabinet and pretty well got these done. There's still a little bit of uh, black on here. This black stuff that's on here is, is kind of a filler material. And in some places I elected not to blast it all out because I just have to fill it again and it's pretty solidly attached. So, um, you know, I have some areas there, just mention that. All in all, uh, I think it looks good. Uh, up next, I'm going to go ahead and try to mask off the areas that don't need paint. And I'm going to go ahead and shoot these with a coat of primer until we decide on what color uh, the bandsaw is going to be painted. So I know I've been getting a lot of questions about the color, and I need to get back up with Jimmy on that and come up with a game plan on, uh, on the color we want to go with. That has not been decided yet. Uh, but things cleaned up good. Blasting cabinet did great. Uh, and let's get this thing uh, masked up and ready to prime. All right, guys. I think we're ready for some primer here. Uh, I did hit a couple of these with the wire wheel just to kind of clean up some places that we didn't quite get with the sandblaster. It's hard to see in that cabinet sometimes. I just missed a few places, but uh, all good to go. I do have uh, things masked here on machine surfaces that I don't want to paint. Um, and I'm just using some rattle can uh, gray primer here. So we'll just... Uh, Go ahead and get this uh, first coat of primer on here. And from there, we'll decide if we want to try to hit some of these areas with some body filler if necessary. Hopefully, I'm not going to have to do a lot of that, if any. Uh, but we'll see and uh, kind of go from there. A lot of times when I'm painting cast iron, I don't even bother priming it. And I know some people say, no, you need to always prime. You know, one of the big reasons to prime is uh, to give a good surface for that paint to stick to. And, you know, when you're painting a really smooth surface like sheet metal or like auto body work, it's absolutely critical that you do the step. With rough castings, you got pretty good grip on the, on the sand casting itself. And a lot of times I'll just uh, paint directly on there. And I'm sure that some of the professional paint guys out there are going to disagree with that. But that is what I have done. And it has worked great for 30 years. So, uh, you know, you're never going to go wrong priming. I will say that. The main reason I'm priming right now is because I don't know what color we're going to paint it. I've got all the stuff cleared, cleaned up, and I don't want any uh, rust to come back in on these and have to uh, come back in here and repeat some of these processes. So the main reason for priming for these parts right now is rust prevention. You know, if I'm going for a that, you know, race car look or that, you know, show car look, that real super shiny look, then yeah, primer's probably good. You're gonna be sanding it out. I don't do a lot of that when I'm restoring old machines. I've talked about this many times in some of my older videos, but I mean, so many times have I gone to restoring an old cast iron machine and when you get in there, you start looking and they paint it with a paintbrush. I mean, it wasn't even sprayed on. These, these machines were built in the 1800s in many cases. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong, you know, if you want to have that mirror paint job on the machine, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, nothing wrong with it at all. And if that's what you're going for, then go for it. But a lot of times when I'm restoring, you know, my goal is, is to try to bring it back as close to the original as I can. And if the original included <laughs> a paint job that was with a paintbrush, which by the way can come out looking absolutely fabulous if done right, um, I have no problem with it. All right, I think we've hit all this side of everything with the primer. I'm gonna let this dry now and we'll probably flip the parts over, paint the other side and uh, let it dry, you know, for a little while. Like I said, we're not gonna be painting anytime soon. The main goal here is just rust prevention. 
Well, there we go. Got some parts cleaned up. Got some parts de-rusted. Um, this is pretty much all of the extra pieces that go on the machine. I pulled a few out. I uh, got a couple things that need to have some work done to them. Uh, we'll do those in some upcoming videos before we get those primed and painted and everything else. But uh, I think we're really making good progress on this so far. So again, the main casting's off getting sandblasted and primed at a commercial sandblasting outfit. Probably not gonna see it for a couple of weeks. Uh, so we'll just be kind of working on some of these other pieces, getting them ready. Uh, I'm sitting here looking and uh, when, when we were sandblasting, again, we had that green paint that was on the outside. I really think that was the original color of the machine. There was that black up underneath it and that black was really a body filler type material. Uh, it wasn't really a primer per se, but they put some of that, that body filler type material on there. I don't know what that is. I've ran into it on a lot of these older castings. It's almost like an tar or asphalt type uh, material, but evidently that's what they kind of used to smooth out some castings. And we stripped some of that off when we were uh, sandblasting and some of these castings are a little bit on the rough side, so we may do a little bit of a, a little bit of body work on these. I'm not going to go overboard. I'm not again shooting for that, you know, show car finish. But uh, it was very common back in the day, and even today, uh, with castings to have Im imperfections in them. And there's nothing wrong with the casting; it just doesn't look good. So you can go in there and put some filler in there and really make that part look nice. And uh, I think we're gonna to try to do that on some of these. So uh, that'll be coming up uh, pretty soon. So with all that, I think that's gonna be a wrap on this episode, guys. As always, uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Please do leave those comments. Please leave those thumbs up. Those really help me out on my channel with YouTube. And uh, yeah, hit that bell icon up there too if you want to get notifications of when new videos are posted. And with that, guys, we're going to sign off and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.